what must you and I leave behind if we are to follow Christ? The simplest answer is we must leave behind idolatry. That's the very first commandment. I'm the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. And they don't have to be visible. They don't have to be stone or wood or marble. They have all sorts of gods, education, athletics, marriage, choice, power, self-expression, beauty, achievement. Whatever you give your whole life for, there's your idol. However you fill in the blank, if only I had blank, I would be happy. If only I had blank, I would be worth something. If only I had blank, I could truly live a fulfilled life. That's your God. For some of you, it's if, I, if I only was married, if I only had this job, if I only had better parents or only had my kids turn out, Many of those are good desires. They're not God's, not the true God. What might a Jerusalem council say to us? What might it say to the, the hard-charging corporate guy here who just sees everything around him? Just this is, this is the conference you should go to. This is how people live. This is how they talk. This is how they promote themselves. This is what they do to get more and more and more. It's very normal. You've got to leave it behind. What might he say to the the woman living life obsessed with beauty, tabloid to tabloid, gossip to gossip? It just seems like that's just the life, right? And that real housewives of East Lansing. (laughs) What about the college student? Just weekend to weekend. When is that going to come? I can get hammered. I can hook up. I can do all this. And you just live for that? Or what about the good college student? You're not doing all that, but it's, I got to get a four point. I got to get into grad school. I got to get this job. got to get that. That can be a God. What about the young professional? And you're in your first job and you're in the workplace and you realize this is a soap opera. And this person is always hating this person, and talking bad about this person and about the boss and the, this person. And they're sleeping with this person. And it just seems like that's normal life. But it's not normal life. Not for a Christian. As you've heard me say before, worldliness is whatever makes sin look normal and righteousness look strange. What if you come from kind of a rough background and you speak in a rough way and you treat women in a rough way and you don't respect authority? What if you just come from a background and you're just a big jerk? (laughs) See, there's a way that Christ can come and He just makes our... Jerkiness even worse. (laughs) There's a way that we can have Christ come alongside us and He makes our people-pleasing even worse. Because it's not the real Christ. It's not the Christ who says, you've got to leave something behind. What about about kids here, young people or students? What about those of you, you're going to, some of you, you're young right now, and there's going to come a time, if you're not there yet, where you're going to say, I really want to see this movie. Everyone's seen this movie. I really want this video game. Everyone has this video game. Everyone has this kind of toy. Everyone's doing this thing. Don't you understand? Your mom and dad probably do understand. And that's where you need to think, might this be what I have to leave behind because I'm going to follow Jesus? And I'm not going to look like everyone else, and I'm not going to do what everybody else does. Some people struggle with the grace of Christ, accepting that there's nothing you can do to be saved. Other people struggle with the lordship of Christ, to accept that He's the one to call the shots. I think this is why most people don't come to Jesus. Yes, there are intellectual objections. Yes, there's kind of existential angst and the problem of suffering. But more often than not, it's simply, I do not want Him to tell me what to do. I just want to live my life. I get a little Jesus, you know, a little help me and kind of help me cope with stuff and feel better, but I don't want him to tell me what to do and point out my sin, tell me what to leave behind and pick up a cross. That's why a lot of people are deceived into thinking that they're Christians and they're not. 